Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And this week I'm gonna talk about owning your content. For many years now, I and many, many others have been putting all of our content into centralized platforms, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. And I wanted to start building out something that was mine under my control so that if one of these social media platforms ever changes hands, I still have my content and I can still distribute it. And what I did over the last couple of weeks was set up a new blog and a whole bunch of ways to connect all these other things to it. And I thought I would talk about how I'm beginning to gain control back over the content that I post to the internet. Let's get to it. Now for context, over the last couple of weeks on the wrap up show here, we've been talking about decentralizing content and some of the ways in which you can do that. We covered RSS, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about today. We talked about podcasting, which to this day, despite the best attempts of all these multi-billion dollar corporations, it remains a decentralized content platform. And we also looked at the risks we have in centralizing our content on platforms, especially when the ownership can change hands, like we'll see soon with Twitter. That may or may not be a bad thing, but nonetheless, your content is in the billion dollar corporation servers and somebody could come along and shut it off one day and you'll lose everything. That happened to me when blip.tv shut down a couple of years back. I had a lot of video content up there and I did not get all of it out before they shuttered. So there are some risks here. So what I did the other day after talking about this for so long is I decided to get my written content in a place that I have direct control over. So I set up a new blog, which you can find at lon.tv slash blog, or go to blog.lon.tv. And what I'm doing here is basically writing out what I would normally put on Twitter and Facebook. I'm still putting things on Twitter and Facebook, but now I'm starting on my blog and then bringing the content over to those places. And I'm also cataloging every time I upload a new video so that people know that I uploaded something because the YouTube algorithm does a terrible job sometimes of letting you know I have new content posted. And some of you like to see everything I do. Some of you like to see certain things that I do. And I think having a place where everything gets put in front of you every time might be helpful. And of course, there are some ways to filter this down as well. Now, I looked at a couple of different ways to host the site. I do have my own web server that I use for a couple of other things. And I went with WordPress. I did look around for other blogging engines first to see what might be out there, but WordPress seems to be the best way to go at the moment. And the reason it is, is that it's really extensively supported. There's a ton of free themes for it. I'm a terrible web designer. I'm not a very good coder. So I just wanted something that was turnkey and simple and WordPress really is the way to get it done quickly. Now, if you're not familiar with WordPress, it is probably the most used blogging engine in the world, and there are two flavors of it. So it is a commercial hosting site, and they've been running this commercial business for a long time where you can pay them to host your website, and it's powered by the WordPress software. WordPress is owned by a company called Automatic, and they have been buying up a lot of familiar properties of late, including Tumblr, they also bought Pocket Casts, which is the podcasting application that I use. But what I like about Automatic is that they also release a lot of their software for free as open source projects. So WordPress, which drives their commercial business, is also available for you to download and install on your own server like I did. And this is how WordPress has been operating from the get-go. So if you want to pay for hosting, you go to wordpress.com. If you want to host it yourself, you go to wordpress.org, download the software and install it. And many hosting providers, including some of the really cheap ones out there, have one-click installs to get WordPress up and running. One note of caution is that you do need to keep up with updates for the WordPress software because it is so extensively used. It's a prime target for people looking to hack into websites. So you really have got to keep things up to date and you should really avoid using plugins that 
are not updated all that frequently because many times a plugin can be a vector for a hacker to come in and attack your site. Now, WordPress recently updated their online editor. So if you want to add posts to your site, it is super simple. They've got this great interface. They've made it really easy now to adjust formatting of your post. You can also embed a whole bunch of different things like tweets and YouTube posts and uh, even RSS feeds right into what you're working on without having to code anything. And provided your theme is up to date, it will carry over really nicely onto your site. Once you click publish, you can schedule stuff. It is just awesome. Uh, they also have some other software out there that works with WordPress sites. I use something on my Mac called Mars Edit. That's a great offline editor. Sometimes when I'm writing, I like to just shut off the internet so I'm not distracted. I can edit offline on my Mac using a very familiar word processing interface and then just send it up to the site. And then I can log in and add some additional formatting to the mix later. They also have a great app that's available on tablets and phones. And I've got it running on my iPhone right here. They've made it really easy to jump into existing posts and edit them. So if I notice a typo or something, or maybe I want to add something while I'm out on the road, I can just load up the app here and adjust that post and insert some changes. I can also make new posts while I am on the road. So if I go to blog post here, I get an interface that's very similar to what we just saw on the web interface, but it is on my phone, which I think is awesome. I can also set drafts here. I can track all of my scheduled posts. I also have some basic statistics. This is also available on the back end of the WordPress uh, system. And you'll see I don't get a lot of traffic, but I wasn't really looking to get a lot of traffic, to be honest with you. I've got some other things that we'll talk about uh, that I'm drawing out of this blog for other sources. But it's really neat just to have all this stuff in a really polished fashion that is open source and free from a software perspective. The other thing that the WordPress system is doing quite well is something called federation. And what I mean by federation is that WordPress.com is largely a platform, much like Medium and Substack are. And they're competing against Medium and Substack to a large degree, especially because they offer a free tier for posting content, just like Substack and Medium do. But at the same time, if you choose to host your own install of WordPress through WordPress.org, they will allow you to federate their content through the rest of the WordPress network. And on the app, they have a second mode here called Reader. So in this mode, we're in writing mode. But if I go over here to Reader, uh, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of sites already loaded in that are all showing up as one single feed. I don't have to go to each of these sites to catch up on what's going on. I can also discover content. They're doing some discovery here and bringing in content that they host themselves, but also content that's being provided by people who have the open source software installed as well. And I think this is a great model. In fact, when we talked about Twitter last week, I suggested that one thing Twitter should do is not only open source their algorithm, but open source the Twitter software itself and federate things much in the same way. Because if you're about free speech, you can very easily do that by releasing your server software out to the world. Whoever wants to host it can host it. And then you can take in the content and process it in a way that works very similar to a centralized platform, yet everything is decentralized. Now, another thing I like about WordPress is that RSS is deeply integrated into all aspects of how WordPress works. So for example, you can get an RSS feed of the whole site. So every time I add a post, no matter what it's about, uh, you will see that on your RSS feed reader or whatever else you're using to syndicate RSS content. But you can also dig a bit deeper. So for example, if I go over here to the video category, uh, these are posts that just reference new videos being posted to my site. So if you don't care about the other things that I have to say and only want to get a feed of what videos I add, if you just append feed to the end of the URL here, uh, what you will get now is an RSS feed for just the video content. And that's how easy it is to make an RSS feed on WordPress. But you can also do it for individual tags. So for example, I have a tag here called update, which is basically updates about the site. And if I click on the update tag here, and just like the category, if I add feed to the URL, 
now I've got a feed of just the update tags. So you can see how deep you can go with this, especially if you only like a certain thing that I do, you can look for that tag in your feed and your RSS feeder will only update when I add something to that category or tag. And this is just built right into WordPress. Any WordPress site you visit, you can add feed to it just like you saw here and get a custom RSS feed tailored to what you want to see. Now also on the blog, you'll find a static page of my RSS feeds that are available at lon.tv slash RSS. And I'll show you that page here real quick to show you what I have on here at the moment. So just about everything that has a feed I have linked here. Uh, you can create, of course, your own feeds from the blog as I showed you, but I also have uh, individual feeds for all three of my YouTube channels. Uh, the email newsletters you can actually get as a feed if you wanted to get that instead. I also have my podcast feed here. Another thing that I did is I set up a master feed of all of my RSS feeds that you can get in one spot. And this also includes my Twitter and Facebook converted to RSS as well. You'll see a lot of redundancy in here, especially if I post something on Twitter and Facebook and the blog. Um, but if you wanted a feed of everything, I always keep this up to date. Uh, so whenever I add some new social platform that my feed reader Bazcux supports, I will uh, throw it into the mix there. So all sorts of fun stuff if you are into RSS. And I definitely suggest you check out my RSS video to learn more about it. Because once you start using it again, if you kind of jumped off the RSS wagon a while back, you will really love using it now. I have made my life so much more efficient, both for work and for entertainment, just by organizing all the different things that I'm interested in into one place. And I've got one big feed that I can look at as opposed to jumping all over the place. Now, another thing that RSS has helped me with is being able to more efficiently push out email newsletters. So if you're subscribed to the main list, you're gonna get an email now once a week, likely on Sunday, with all of the videos that I posted the prior week, just in case you missed something. And then of course, if we have site announcements or something, I'll add that uh, to that newsletter as well. And because this is so efficient, I'm now able to do a daily email which takes all the stuff that I posted in the prior 24 hours and just pushes it out as an email newsletter. And I'll show you what one of those looks like right here. So this is an example of the template that I built. And what I did is I just kind of hand coded uh, with the help of an email template that was free. I got this one from uh, litmus.com and I went on my uh, NAS device where I've got a little web server and I just have PHP pulling down of my WordPress feed and building me what you see here. I did struggle a little bit because WordPress doesn't seem to like to do full on RSS delivery of posts, but I was able to tweak the code a little bit on the WordPress side, thanks to it being open source and get this to work perfectly. If anyone wants to know more, I will do a little video on the Snippets channel about what I adjusted to get these full feeds out here. But I don't really have to do much with this. I just go to the link on my NAS and it gives me this. Now what I do with it uh, is I grab the source code from the generated page and drop it into my email uh, blaster that I have. Now this is another area where I found some real efficiencies and money savings. So for a long time I was using MailChimp and Constant Contact. The, the uh, last provider I was using was called Active Campaign. And these, of course, are all popular email blasting services. They work fine. They've got some nice features. They're fairly easy to use, but they cost a fortune. And one of the issues that you run into when your list gets bigger is that it gets more and more expensive to host your email services with these people because they charge you based on the size of your list. So right now I've got a little over 3,000 people total across my different email lists that I set up. And I'm proud to say that I think every one of those people subscribe to the email on their own, which is great. Uh, but you can see here the cost for hosting that size of a list right now on MailChimp is $59. On Constant Contact, it's $55. Active Campaign was $79. And this kept sneaking up on me because most of these services charge you by the year. So I finally just got out of Active Campaign, which was the last one I used. And I found this. This is called Sendy. Now, Sendy is a self-hosted email blaster. It works a lot like Constant Contact and all these other services do, but the cost is significantly less. 
you pay $69 for a software license and install it. You can actually have multiple brands working off of the same installation. They charge you per server for it. They do make a major update about once a year or so. And when there's a major update, they charge you a $34 upgrade fee. But for the most part, you can just keep running it forever if you never upgrade it. Uh, so I did just upgrade to their newest version and it was a pretty substantial update. Now it does not send email from your server directly. It uses a third party service. And for a long time, it only worked with Amazon SES, which is part of Amazon's AWS infrastructure. But they now support a few other similar services like Elastic Email, SendGrid, and MailJet. But I've been using it with Amazon because that's what it worked with when I first installed it. Now you saw how much the monthly fees were for those services that we were looking at a second ago. It costs me less than $2 a month to send email out to my entire list. It's like, I think, 10 cents per thousand sends that you do. And at the most here, based on my current list size, I'm doing maybe about 20,000 emails a month. So you can see just how dramatically less expensive sending out email is. Uh, Sendy though is not as feature rich as some of these services are. So it does give you all the basics here. It manages your lists and unsubscribes and imports and all the other things that you can do. Uh, but it is very weak when it comes to templating, which is why when I make a new campaign here, I have to kind of grab my source code from the template that I have running on that server. Let me pull that up for you real quick here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just select the text and just paste it in. So you can see I can just go to raw text here and then I just switch back over to the WYSIWYG editor and edit away here. So it does require a little bit of uh, extra work to get it all put together. Um, but for me, I just was not, I just couldn't justify the cost that I was paying for these email services, especially when I could do it myself for a lot less. And I'm hoping that a future update of Sendy adds in some of the templating and other features that we see in the competing services. Because one of the strengths of Constant Contact and MailChimp is that they have a very easy web-based way to get your email looking pretty nicely with a lot of different templates. And most of these services also support importing RSS feeds directly, which Sendy does not do. And people have been asking the developer of Sendy to add that functionality for a while now, uh, and he hasn't. So hopefully at some point it gets a little bit more flexible to use. But for what I'm doing, I found a great workflow. And if you are looking for a way to do email, for less money and you're not afraid to kind of dig into HTML a little bit to develop your templates, I think you will be very, very happy with it. Now, the last puzzle piece of this self-hosting adventure has been video hosting. And unfortunately, I do not have a good answer on this one just yet. The reason is, is that video hosting is extremely expensive. Videos are big and they consume a lot of bandwidth when people are watching them. So there's a reason why Google owns YouTube and why it's been very difficult for somebody to build a competing service. So what I've been doing is putting my videos on Amazon, on Floatplane, and on YouTube, and of course keeping a really good backup on my NAS here at the house and then backing that up to the cloud. But just for the heck of it, I did do some research to see what it would cost to get my videos onto a CDN to distribute globally, and it is not cheap. Now it's hard though to figure out exactly how much bandwidth I would need because about 80% of my YouTube traffic comes from people who've never watched one of my videos before. It's been like that here on YouTube since my beginnings. And that's because I review a whole bunch of different stuff and YouTube is very good about putting videos in front of people the minute they're looking for something specific. And I am that guy that you find when you're looking for that printer review. So I don't think I would get anywhere near the traffic if I was self-hosting my video that I'm kind of calculating for here. But I just wanted to see what it would cost to basically deliver exactly what YouTube does every month. And by my calculation, uh, my viewership would be about 320 terabytes of data each month for video streaming. 
and I base that on what YouTube compresses my videos down to when they present it to a viewer. So this video will roughly come in at around 400 megabytes or so, give or take, when YouTube is done crunching it. Now it's a little more complicated than this because also YouTube only gives you the portions of the video that you're watching. So if you watch a video in the middle, it doesn't download the beginning first. It starts downloading at the middle and then goes from there. But again, we'll just keep it rough here. So 320 terabytes a month. The cheapest I could find was Blazing CDN, uh, which will do it for $1,160. But when you get into some of the more well-known CDNs like Akamai, we're looking at $20,000 a month just for bandwidth. And this does not account for what the hosting costs would be. Uh, so you can see even a little measly YouTube channel like mine costs a fortune. And I do think we should appreciate what some of these platforms are doing for users for free, especially platforms like YouTube that actually help me build a career doing this because they are providing the hosting and running an excellent discovery engine that has really helped me out quite a bit building this career. But I do think we're going to see this number drop dramatically over the next couple of years. The reason, of course, is that many of us are getting much faster internet connections at home, especially on the upstream. And I think that might open the door for some of these decentralized methods of peer-to-peer -peer video transmission. That's one option. Uh, the other option, of course, is that storage and bandwidth for big providers is getting a lot less expensive as well. So for example, WordPress now is offering their video press services for a very reasonable rate here. After the introductory price, it's 10 bucks a month billed annually. 120 bucks a year is not bad. And you get unlimited bandwidth for your videos with no ads, but they limit the storage to one terabyte. So that's not going to cut it, I think, for a lot of YouTube channels that, like me, have thousands of videos in their library that will take up much more than that. But maybe this is something to try in the future with the hope that they'll add additional storage options down the road as things continue to grow. But we'll see what happens. But I think we're going to have many more choices here, just like we're starting to get more choices for ISPs locally. So that is where I am at right now. I'm going to keep plugging away at this blog and uh, posting things here first before I put them on Twitter and Facebook and Telegram and all the other places that I post to. And it's been kind of liberating to get back into blogging again and have something that all these other things are tethered to versus the other way around. So even when I go to tweet something now, I do a blog post first and then do the tweet from there. I do have some great automation tools that I've been using like Zapier to make things more efficient from that perspective going from the blog to the socials, but I still have to tweak that a little bit more. But it's been really fun. I'm finding it's not taking up any additional time because I'm already tweeting and doing all this other stuff anyhow. So maybe it adds a minute or two, but it's been super quick based on all the different ways that I can post things up on the site. So definitely check it out. If you're looking for what is in the digest email every morning, you can see an example of this. So I have posts like we saw earlier, but I also keep a little link blog of things that I'm reading throughout the day that I thought were interesting. And then I'll have longer posts here of things that require a little bit more explanation. And then we've got a consolidated list of videos that you can find there as well. And you can sign up right on the blog uh, or at lon.tv slash digest. Now this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you. We don't have any new supporters to thank this week, but we do have some super chatters who contributed during one of my live streams. They are Tech Time with Eric and Keith Robinson, and both of them actually were contributors last week as well, so I want to thank them for helping out again this week. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution to the channel through my donor box page. By the way, I set up that donor box page because another centralized platform, Patreon, really screwed things up a couple of years ago. And I decided I needed to have some control over this stuff as well. So that was why we set up the donor box, which has worked great and is a lot less expensive uh, versus Patreon. We also support the YouTube membership program where you can join with the join button and make a monthly contribution to the channel there. I also just got access to super chats, so you'll see, or super thanks, you'll see a super thanks down below the video that you can click on to leave a one-time tip if you found something helpful. And of course, we support Floatplane, another platform that is run by the Linus Tech Tips crew that I'm proud to be a part of, so you can contribute any way which makes sense. 
And I want to thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who just watch on a regular basis too because all of those things together equal channel growth. We have a bunch of ways you can follow me. We talked about some of those on the uh, earlier part of the video here, but we have my Amazon page at lon.tv slash Amazon shop where you can find a lot of my content ad free. And of course, we've got the new email list at lon.tv slash digest. The digest is every day. The email is once a week. The Facebook group is still growing, so you can join us over there with over a thousand fans of the channel. My Discord is also getting pretty active. I got to pop in there more often because I keep getting notifications of all this cool stuff that is happening. So I will get over there a little bit more than I have been. And then, of course, we've got the new Telegram page as well. I'm going to try to be everywhere, uh, just given how crazy social media is always growing and changing. And we also have a store where we sell previously reviewed items for prices lower than new. And you can go to lon.tv slash store and see what's available right now. We also have a special email list just for the store, lon.tv slash store alert. So whenever we get things added, I send out an email just to that list to let everyone know there's something new to take a look at. So if you want to get in on that and not hear about anything else, you can certainly do that by subscribing to that store alert email. That is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. I've got a bunch of fun trips on the horizon for the week, just quick day trips to learn about some new products. So as soon as I'm able to talk about those things, I will have some update dispatch videos for you from those and some reviews coming up this week too. It's going to be a busy one. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman. Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya. And Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.